Hey guys, what's up and welcome back to my channel, Not Financial Advice, where I talk about everything DeFi and crypto related. I'm going to be covering Element Finance, which is a relatively new and crazy and innovative uh, project that has recently deployed on the Ethereum mainnet. So if you're new here, make sure you hit that subscribe button and let's jump right into it. If you head to their website, it's element.fi and the first thing that you see is going to be this page where you have a couple of options. Um, you can save, earn, or trade and build. This is a DeFi fixed rate protocol, capital efficiency for DeFi experts, and fixed rate yield for casuals. Um, they give a couple examples for growing your savings, for repurposing principal, trading yield, and then they even offer an Element SDK for developers that want to build on it. Let's real quick check out the backers and see if this project is legit. This is pretty good. They have um, developers, they have people from Consensus, Balancer, and Aave, all really solid and well-known, trusted names in the crypto space. If you check out their team, most of their team has been doxxed, which is um, kind of uncommon with these DeFi projects, but it's pretty good to know at the same time who is working on this project and who you're essentially trusting your money with. So Will is the CEO and I've heard him being described as a galaxy brain, which I can only assume is a great thing. I watched Johnny talk on one of these um, hackathon videos that I'll link in the description below. I can actually show you. So this is gonna be their official Twitter page and then you can even join the community on Discord Discord's always a great way to get involved with the community and, and ask your questions to the developers. Um, oh, so Johnny was previously an aerospace engineer, E2 researcher, and closet agent. Solid resume right there. Charles came from MakerDAO, a really well-known um, DeFi protocol as well. And then you have Windra, who's the head of strategy and growth at ElementFi. Um, and he did a really great job explaining some of these concepts in another video that I'm going to be linking in the description below. And they have a female engineer on the team, which I am completely supportive of for obvious reasons. Sarah, she actually um, has a background as a software engineer with PayPal and Venmo. So pretty solid uh, backdrop for this project so far. I actually made a PowerPoint for you guys because it, this because it's necessary. I'll just leave it at that. Okay. So what is Element Finance? Element Finance is essentially a way to give you capital efficiency um, for your assets. So for savers, you can actually grow your savings by buying principal tokens that are discounted versions of popular crypto assets. And they're really focusing on assets such as ETH, BTC, DAI, and Curve LUSD, which you can get from depositing in the Curve LUSD pool. I'll also link a video that gives a tutorial walkthrough on how to do that, so I'm not going to be doing that in this video. Element also allows people to be yield seekers, which basically repurposes their principal and separate it from the actual underlying asset. And so they can be a little bit more creative and efficient in deploying both of these components in generating income. And for traders, you can always just buy and sell yield and principal tokens on custom AMMs, which are automated market makers, um, and theirs are called element pools. And so to actually use the protocol, you will be connecting your wallet and choosing one of these options to begin. So in this video, I'm going to try and break it down in the simplest way possible, very straightforward, and um, use layman's terms whenever possible. So Element Finance, here's the website, element.fi, how Element works. So basically what the protocol does is it wraps yield-bearing assets and splits the resulting shares into a principal and a yield token. So think of it kind of like your savings account, right? You put your money in and then the bank gives you back a percentage APY on that deposit. But the thing is with savings account, 
you can't remove that deposit and still uh, keep your exposure to that interest. That's where Element comes in because it allows you to both keep your exposure to the yield for your deposit as well as using your deposit for other things such as selling it. And in this example, you know, it's going to be using um, Yearn Vault strategies because Element works with Yearn and they also work with Balancer. So you'll be getting a lot of benefits from both protocols with Element. And on this one, say you're depositing it for a six month term and you get 24% APY. So the YETH represents the ETH that is being utilized by Yearn. It's what you put into Yearn. And what Element does is it wraps it and splits it into two, your principal token and your yield token. This PT just means principal token, and then the YT means yield token. And you'll have both of these in your wallet after you mint them, and then you can redeem them in six months, the principal for 100, which is your original, and then the yield token for 12 ETH, which is 24% average APY in six months. Pretty simple and straightforward, right? Okay, so let's go on to the next example. One of the biggest questions that I had for this protocol was why would anybody want to sell their underlying asset at a discount, right? If I have 100 ETH or if I have 10 ETH, why would I want to sell it for 9 ETH? Well, this diagram explains just that. So in this example, say you deposit 10 ETH in a one-year lockup, and this is the element by ETH vault with about 20% APY. When you do it, you mint the principal token and the yield token, and they're actually in equal quantities at the beginning of this time decay period. So you have 10 element principal token, an element yield token, and they're both utilizing the yearn vault strategies, and that's why the Y is there. I know it looks ridiculous, but <laughs> bear with me here. What you can do is now you can sell your 10 principal tokens at a discount on the market in the AMMs, Automated Market Makers, and receive 9 ETH principal token. And now you receive 9 ETH and you still have your 10 yield tokens that still give you um, exposure to yields of 10 ETH worth. But now you can use recursion to your advantage by depositing this 9 ETH that you just got into another one year lockup, getting another 20% APY um, and minting it into two more principal and yield tokens, which gives you nine principal um, tokens and then 19 yield tokens because you have nine and nine, right? And then nine plus the existing 10 would give you 19 yield tokens. So you're basically increasing and um, compounding your yield just simply by holding your yield tokens and you're able to utilize your principal by recursively compounding it in Element. This chart was a simulation that the team did um, based off of about nine recursions of compounding your token. So you start out with 10 ETH and then once you mint it, you get the 10 principal and the 10 yield. You recursively deposit that nine back into element and mint more yield and more principal tokens. And so now you have 19. And then if you do it again, you keep selling it off at discounts and then keep uh, redepositing it into element, therefore compounding your principal and yield tokens when you mint each time. And at the end of it, you get about 69% adjusted APY. So when the time decay period is over, and it's, it's essentially like a bond if you think of it that way, and when this matures, you can now redeem it for one to one. So your net gain is about 4.9 ETH, and your final redeem balance should be about 16.9 ETH. This one is a different use case focusing more on the principal token. If you're more risk averse and you want to be more of a safe user and just earn automated market maker fees, then you can simply just buy somebody's discounted 
token in this example, they use BTC. And then you can stake it in the AMM by, and this is kind of like providing liquidity where you supply equal parts of both. So you'll be putting up equal parts BTC of your own as well as the discounted um, principal token BTC. And therefore you can collect AMM fees because the way that AMMs work is that liquidity providers are incentivized to provide liquidity by collecting a percentage of all fees. So every transaction charges you a gas fee as well as a LP fee. And that LP fee gets distributed to everybody that's providing liquidity based off of their percentage of the entire pool. So if you were to become an LP and stake your discounted BTC in the pool, then you can gain the BTC from the discount as well as BTC from AMM fees, which are both great incentives for buyers on this side of the market. Another really cool way to use element finance is to gain exposure from different assets without having to give up your ETH bag or whatever underlying asset bag you have. So in this example, let's say you have ETH, but maybe you wanna earn die yield because it's higher or whatever the case is, what you can do is actually sell 150 ETH for about 300k die, deposit this die into Element and say like a three month term, mint your principal token die and then your yield token die. And because both are fungible, now you can sell this principal token die back to ETH at a discount, getting about 148.5 ETH while retaining your exposure to the die yield because you still have this 300k yield token which is represented right here element yield token yearn strategy die. So essentially you've paid about 1.5 ETH to retain your majority bag of ETH and gain exposure to the die yield. That's pretty amazing. And this chart just kind of shows you the full usability of primitives. Element is a choose your own adventure financial game, right? Everything is kind of gamified. So Essentially, the whole ecosystem is you can mint these principal tokens and yield tokens, and on both sides, they are fungible and they are usable. On the principal token up here, you can stake it and become an LP in the AMMs where you can redeem the um, principal token and collect the AMM fees. On the yield side, you can also stake those yield tokens by LP in the AMMs where you can redeem them later on at maturity um, for your full yield as well as the AMM fees. And so you've gained four different levels of income just by splitting one asset into two separate tokens. So where does this fixed rate come from, right? Well, it comes from the incentivizing of both sides in the market. When you have users that have principal tokens in three month, six month, 12 month terms, and the user wants to be able to use those funds now, they're incentivized to sell it into the market and free up capital. And because they're selling at a discount, that incentive creates this market of buyers and sellers. And the reason that the principal token is trading at the discount is because it's been locked up in a time period, kind of like a bond, right? So Today, if it's like day one, one ETH would not be worth one ETH until whatever the lockup period is, um, has reached maturity. So this opportunity cost is what creates the discount versus, and that creates the incentive of a buyer because now instead of buying an ETH off of the exchange, I can buy them discounted through this AMM, which is a huge incentive. And if you're like me, you're probably asking What's the difference between Pendle and Element and APY? Because there's been so many of these very similar protocols that have been released um, and gaining traction this year. And all of these deal with yields and principles and future gains. In a nutshell, the difference with Pendle is their principal token is not tradable. They're more focused on the variable interest market trading side and they use a decay trading curve. With AP Wine, they focus more on future yield and they sell variable interest upfront to earn initial capital without speculating. 
which is why I believe Element is more flexible and um, more comprehensive of the both because you can use both sides, the principal and the yield token, and they focus on the fixed rate and deposit side, which allows additional usability for the principal token. And they work with Yearn, which is a great aggregator, and Balancer, um, one of the very first AMMs. And so they're built on a really great ecosystem already, and they have great incentives to create a market of buyers and sellers. I know you're probably thinking, win token, right? Well, at the moment, there is no native element token, so anything that you see is probably not the same thing or it's a scam. What Windra basically said is that they built element to not rely on native tokens to generate yield because it's not sustainable, for example, bear markets. And they looked and they studied Uniswap, Yearn, Aave, um, and realized that none of them actually rely on native tokens to generate yield or attract interest. They all have organic yields, and that is more what Element wants to build. But he did not rule out a native token in the future. So if you remember, Uniswap users, the early adopters, were very well rewarded by a um, Uniswap airdrop. So I think there's actually a good chance for early adopters and users of Element to be eligible for a potential future airdrop because one of the best ways to get airdrops is to interact and actually use these DeFi protocols and be early supporters and advocators of them because a lot of this stuff is really community based. So fingers crossed for that you guys. Um, make sure you do your part and share this video. Let's introduce Element Finance to as many people as possible. Onboard enough people so that we can all push for this future airdrop and get more TVL, more volume, more LPs, and just more passive income. So how does Element actually become profitable? Well, they raised millions of dollars in funding already, um, but they also get generous profit sharing via referral partner fees with Yearn because they work with Yearn Vaults and um, Yearn Strategies. And they also take a percentage of the Yearn AMM fees as well as their own vaults. Not only that, but with their SDK, you can build more things on Element. So this is kind of just the beginning. You can build automated leveraging, self-paying loans like Alchemix, yield ladders, etc. I mean, the possibilities are endless here. For those that want to know the nitty gritty um, math formulas, I will be linking this document below where you can have as many graphs and charts and formulas as anyone could possibly want. Um, this goes and explains a lot of what their model is built on. Make sure you check out their, um, their Medium blog as well. They have a lot of great articles that help further explain this complex protocol. And it's pretty well updated, I would say. Um, and then there's a the construction paper as well. This one is really lengthy and it's not final. It's essentially a work in progress. Um, and this also goes really in depth on the whole protocol. So if you're interested, give this a look. I'll link it. Um, and then this is their official docs portal. Thanks so much for watching. I hope this video helped or at least introduced you to Element and interested you in learning more about it, make sure you subscribe and share the video. And if you're not already, follow me on Twitter where I constantly tweet really cool things that I find about DeFi and crypto. And if you have any questions, you know what to do. I will see you in the comment section below. Thanks guys, bye.